Hey folks, this is Lex here from Board at Work, and today we have a review of the Lollipop goodness on the Moto G, second generation. Now, if you guys haven't heard, uh, Lollipop has been released to a couple devices, very few selected, specifically next devices, and unlocked devices and pure edition devices from Motorola. More specifically, you have the Moto X, second generation, pure edition, and what I have currently, the Moto G, second generation. This hit about a couple days ago, and I've gotten some time to actually experience it, get acquainted with it, and see whether or not a Lollipop runs just as efficiently as you've seen on the Nexus 6, and whether the features are actually worth the benefit of upgrading, and how they actually work in day-to-day -day use. So that said, we're gonna get right into it, and check out the Moto G Lollipop review. <music> Now starting off with the lock screen of Lollipop, as you can tell, it has been refined, cleaned up a bit, and smoothened out. Now, Lollipop has a standard frame rate of 60 frames per second. That is not device specific, that is just a software enhancement. Uh, that is a, pretty much the base for, uh, frames per second for Lollipop. And with that, you get a very smooth experience. As you can see here, swiping up is a general unlock feature. And swiping down actually expands your notifications, which is very nice to see. Here now, I do have a notification saying "board at work" as well, uh, and you can see there I do have my Google Now card. That actually shows up a lot more frequently, which is very convenient. Uh, sometimes it showed more on the widget on the home screen, but now uh, game progress, anything that you want to be updated on, shows up on the lock screen. As you can see here, you can tap that to go back to the regular mode, and I'm actually going to swipe that back down and actually wipe all the cards away. And with that, we're gonna actually before we do that, we're gonna see how you have the phone option to expand and also the camera. That's pretty much the usual two options on lock screens nowadays. And it's just very quick access. Now you cannot customize that, but those are the most frequently used ones, so it's not really that big of an issue. Uh, as you can see there, as I pan open there, you do have the new Lollipop interface. Now, it looks very clean and very similar to the Google Now launcher that you had before. Uh, it's not that new, but what is new, the animation, interactions, and the speed of how this works. So we're actually gonna start off with the notification bar, and this is by far one of the new and most best features of Lollipop. As you can see there, I do have the game progress as well. Uh, Miami beat Brooklyn, which is very, well, it's not over yet, but Miami's gonna win that game. As you can see there, it is very, very nice, very fluid, and very translucent. As you can see there, there's no more black bar behind the notification bar. Uh, now, if you actually wanna actually see certain different uh, notifications or toggles, you can actually swipe back up and pull all the way down and get more options. And now, the notification bar has been enhanced in many ways. One, as quick access to turning off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now, if I click the top section, it just turns on Bluetooth, and if I click the other section, it turns off Wi-Fi. But now I'm actually gonna click that back, and if you actually wanna go deeper into the settings, you actually have the option of clicking the bottom portion of that, and it takes you to the actual app itself, which is very convenient, and uh, it's definitely a big update uh, for the notification bar. The same goes for Bluetooth as well. Now, if you do have a SIM card in your device, you have the ability to check your data and how much you've used for the month just by clicking uh, on the data. This is insanely convenient. I mean, it's just quick access to know your limits, and you can actually set limits like you could before uh, in the actual app itself. As you can see, there, you have the more settings options at the bottom, but overall, it is very decent and definitely a welcome feature as well. Uh, you do have the flashlight option, which is very cool to see, and that works very well, so no complaints about the options in the notification bar at all. As you can see there, you do have some new things with your account settings and battery. Battery is very nice, always to see your percentage, and settings is settings, it takes you right to that. But the most important new feature, in my opinion, is guest mode uh, for Lollipop. As you can see here, I'm gonna click that, and I am the owner, but you can also add an, a guest mode to your device, and that is so if you wanna pass it off to a friend, if they wanna use it, they do not have access to your applications, your messages, and your data. This is pretty much like desktop, uh, which is ins insane. It's 2014, guys. We are really breaking new territory with things like guest mode, uh, and your owner account, and data protection, on your mobile device, so that's really good to see. And as well, more settings, you can manage that any way you want to. So you can actually add any Gmail account to this system. Now, the default account will always be the owner and the original login Gmail, but you can have a friend have their own Gmail account, have all their apps, all their email, and a separate separate section of the device, so that's really good to see. Now, you do have more need more memory for something like that, and with the Moto G, I really wouldn't recommend that. That does take up more data and internal storage really isn't that big, but it does have a micro SD card, so if you want to expand that, you can do so as well. As far as the notification bar, that is pretty much the majority of the enhancements. Uh, if you want to 
actually open up an application that is in that notification drawer, you just double tap it as well, and you get progress. And as this is taking me to Google Now, which has been updated for Lollipop. As you can see here, as I swipe over, you do have that that tray that's been really coveted for Android design going forward with Lollipop and even in KitKat a little bit. As you can see there, you do have that logo as well. And Google Now has been updated with more colors, uh, more speed, and just overall more usefulness. I mean, parking location is better. Uh, game updates are better. You can actually go to play-by-play -play just from the notification uh, in Google Now. And overall, it's providing me with more stories and, and things that I... I enjoy uh, across the internet just by knowing my habits. Now, it's a bit scary. Google Now is almost insanely good sometimes, and it does get a bit scary. So be cautious of what you want to use with Google Now. But overall, it has been enhanced with Lollipop. Uh, starting off with the new app tray, you can see that it is now a white logo, and clicking it brings off a very nice and smooth animation with the white background panning your applications. I I just do this for fun half a day. I, I really do. It's just it's really enjoyable. It's quick. And this is on a Snapdragon 400 processor. Um, and it is still running at that 60 frames per second. No lag. And honestly, uh, compared to my, my Moto X, which is running um, on KitKat, uh, either way, it still has more battery life than my Moto X. Uh, so extreme value with the device and software. Battery won't be an issue on this specific device. I can't speak for the Moto X when it gets the update for carriers, but as far as the Moto G, it is definitely good with battery. As you can see here, you do have the new um, pretty much on-screen home buttons, the back and multitasking uh, with KitKat that was changed with Lollipop. Uh, and I really enjoy these buttons. For some reason, I love the shapes. It's, it's new, it's modern, and it really speaks to Mado Matias Dorte uh, that came over from Palm Web West onto the Android team with Ice Cream Sandwich. As you can see here, as I click the multitasking button, you get a very Chrome-like scroll tab system. As you can see, it is fast. I mean, there's no lag, guys. I mean, this is on a Moto G again, so definitely bang for your buck with this update. It's not going to decrease uh, productivity or usability at all. It's only going to increase it. As you can see here, you have the ability to swipe and pretty much do whatever you need to do with multitasking. Um, and you can also access Google Now by also doing that, but this time, instead, instead of having that little, that little oval circle that came up before, it pretty much just pops up and then you can go to it. So that's very nice to see and the back button is the back button. Now we're actually going to go to settings. As you can see there, toolbar brings out the whole system. And we're going to go to uh, more. As you can see here, you have default messenger airplane mode. Nothing has really changed in that section at all. Uh, if you go to display, you have adaptive brightness, wallpaper, and also ambient display. And now this hasn't worked properly for me, and that's maybe because it is on Moto G hardware. Uh, but overall, this pretty much helps with notifications, and it says wake screen display when notifications arrive. So I'm actually going to switch that on, and when notifications come on, it's pretty nice to see. So we're actually going to test that out uh, right now. Now, as you can see, it did light up the display, and it's very, very nice. It's very quick and seamless. Uh, there's no double tap. There's no nothing. But as it did come up, it was very nice to see. But it does glow. Uh, so as you actually want to tap it, it brings up the whole uh, notification lock screen system. So it's very nice. It's, it works, I guess, maybe 85 to 90 percent of the time. But when it does work, it is very convenient. And it helps with, even though you do have an LED notification light on this and not the Nexus 6, uh, either way is good. And it's definitely a welcome feature with Lollipop. Taking a look at the battery section of Lollipop, it almost looks the same, but it does have some new enhancements. Now, in terms of actually uh, approximately giving you estimations on your battery life, it has been clutch. Uh, it definitely gives you what you need. I wish I took this picture, guys, but I, I lie to you not. I had five days and about 12 hours of battery life on Lollipop with the Moto G with a mixture of standby time and actual usage and on-screen time, etc. But it has given me five days. That is no exaggeration. So you can definitely optimize your use case and definitely get more than a day with Lollipop on the Moto G. And in some cases, about two to three days if you know how to manage your time right. So that's really good to see. But the most important update is battery saver. So I'm actually going to click that and I'm going to turn it on. And as you can see, it changes the notification tray and the, uh, the home screen buttons uh, to red. Now, 
I'm pretty sure notification because just let you know the battery saver was on. I feel like this is a bit intrusive and a little bit over exuberant just to let you know that battery saver is on. Uh, but uh, for, what, for what it's worth, they chose to do this. I hope they change this or make an, an option to change this in the future because it, it's just a huge dramatic change and it kind of isn't refined at all. It doesn't go with the lollipop uh, color scheme at all. So hopefully that is an option in the future, but I'm actually going to go back to battery and turn that on off because that is very annoying so that's off there you go and scrolling down again location security accounts language input Motorola privacy backup and reset Motorola id so mostly the same settings here and i'm actually going to go to about to about phone as you can see android 5.0 um, and you can check your system updates just all the same so nothing really dramatic now in terms of bugs issues things that i've experienced while using the device. Uh, I have experienced some serious Wi-Fi issues. Now, I do have Comcast Xfinity. At first, I thought it was my own service because Comcast is pretty horrible in my area, but it is not. All my other devices work pretty fine in my household. Uh, Wi-Fi issues range from not being able to download anything from my Wi-Fi network to having extremely slow speeds. So, uh, I have seen on the internet there have been issues with this, so I'm not the only one. So hopefully Motorola does send an update to fix that. But overall, uh, data, messaging, everything else works completely fine. And it is very, very stable. There are no major bugs other than the Wi-Fi issue. And that is dependent on how often you use Wi-Fi, which I use it quite a lot. So that's, that's that. But everything has been updated. All the apps are extremely beautiful. As you can see here, I'm going to go to this section here. And that is the new messaging app. Everything has the same lollipop design philosophy, and it's really good to see. I'm actually going to go to newsstand here, and as you can see, all the apps, again, are coinciding with this design language. And going forward, this ha might be the best mobile operating system out to date. Now, I'm a huge WebOS fan, so I'm going to stick through and through to that being the best ever. Uh, shoot me if you want to, but overall, right now, currently, the mainstream, this is definitely one of the best operating systems. Uh, things to note that I find with the software are battery life, fluidity, 60 frames per second, applications look beautiful, uh, a variety of options, notification tray is by far another great uh, addition uh, to Lollipop. Uh, as you can see, they're just very, very smooth. I mean, I cannot stress that enough. But overall, that is my take on Lollipop. Be sure to download it if you guys have the device. Uh, get it going, run it. Let me know your thoughts, comment in the section below. Be sure to like, share, favorite the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. And remember to always enjoy your entertainment. Thanks, folks.